and uh, I founded an arts organization, which, which you mentioned, Arts Aid, and it was basically not for profit. And there is a reason why it was not for profit because I couldn't find a job and I had to figure out to stay back in the U.S. It was 501c3. It's, it's, it's a technical bit. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Um, work with different interest groups and uh, different neighborhoods and everything. Uh, what, what, what kind of made it difficult after some time was that uh, we had to raise our own funds. Uh, and it was an ongoing process, very painful. So we were not actually able to do you know, uh, our projects uh, to, to that extent, to that degree, and that kind of intensity. And uh, slowly, I, I think, like, one woke up to that bit about entrepreneurial bit, that, like, somewhere one had to find a balance between the, the discourse and the commerce. And when I had an opportunity to start Religar Art, um, I thought it was, like, I had to do that balancing act. Uh, but just to go back to the art market, that... Um, I, I make a distinction because, like, you know, historically, of course, art has been here for hundreds and thousands of years. Uh, in terms of market, I, I would say it's just like it's a recent phenomenon. And when you talk about the transactional aspect, when you're talking about, you know, the, uh, the institutions like the galleries and the museums and the auction houses, art fairs that you talked about and biennales and triennales. And, um, and, of course, when you talk about what constitutes the market, it's you and I, but also you wait for it to come to... Um, a, a critical mass, and I think in past um, a decade or so, you, I think I think we are we are experiencing a long way to go. And I remember we were talking um, during the lunch um, that it's, it's, it's well begun, um, turbulent, but um, it's well begun. And you know, so yeah, um, it's more structured now. Uh, the scenario is more structured, and of course, the players are the galleries, the auction houses. And, um, you know, the artists themselves as well as, you know, art markets and art fairs and everything. Um, but uh, basically, so uh, now that the structure in play is in place or is it in place and uh, are we still young or, I mean, uh, how, how do you, I mean, kind of um, quantify that? And, uh, you know, I know I had this discussion with you earlier on and you had mentioned that in the West, even, you know, documentation, other, you know, um, documentation, evaluation, everything was in place. But for us, we, it's just, uh, you know, the journey is just beginning. So um, how, how would you really quantify the art market structure here? Um, as I said, these are early days, but very, very exciting. Uh, you know, we have, we have witnessed a huge boom and, and, and also the burst of October 2008. Uh, what, is, what has happened during... Uh, there, there's a saying, right? When you go through the turbulent times and you come out standing, then, like, you know, you can, you can, you can really, like, you know, be there for a long, long time. And I think that's, that's how it is destined. You can't stop in an art. It's going to be there and it's going to rock. Um, what, what is essential is that, like, you know, uh, we all come together. We have to address the issues of infrastructure. We have to look at uh, practices, um, all kinds, you know, uh, the documentation of it um, and the positioning. And, 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 and uh, just, just, I don't know, like sometimes, like, I think we think too much about borrowing from uh, the model abroad, uh, somewhere we have to trust ourselves enough that, like, you know, hey, we're going to create our own models. We have to have our own ecosystem and let it be informed by, like, you know, um, however it gets informed, but, like, you know, we have to back ourselves. The difference between India and China is China is a much larger uh, economy just now and it has a lot more that has happened to it a little earlier and coming out of their entire revolution, I think the whole world was looking at it and everything took off. I think we're about 10 years behind them and also poised for a great leap. So in terms of our art market, we may not be as large as China just now and not as visible as China just now, not as buoyant, but I think it's definitely on its way there if you're looking at the entire art uh, scenario from India. Uh, you know, the thing about China, at least to my knowledge, is that um, a lot of Chinese market is generated by their own Chinese buyers. Of course, and that's the same for India, and that's yeah. historically, that's the same for any country. The moment a country does well, uh, the moment the country's economy does well, the art market does well. I mean, if you look at Latin America, they did well when the drug markets did well because they were supported by that. <clears throat> the same in Indonesia, and the same for everybody in every country. So India started doing well in the art market only after the liberalization and when the Indian economy picked up. So it's directly related to the economy of the country. And also the collectors are priding themselves on taking back part of the heritage. Contemporary art is part of the heritage, 
part of culture that they would like to own. And so it's true of every country and so also of India. So it's definitely moving with the growth of the country. Um, you know, again, then again with China, it's like, um, is it the antiquities that they are buying back or is it contemporary no, art? No, both. They're, they're it's the both. They're different markets. And yeah. in India, the, unfortunately, the antiquity market is a very gray area without uh, any structure. The art market, people like to think that the contemporary art market, modern and contemporary, is not structured, but it's far more structured than the antiquity market. Because there are galleries, we're out in the open, we're doing regular business, we are written about, there are, there's, of course there's documentation on antiquities, but there's as much documentation happening now about contemporary art. And uh, it's much more transparent than the antiquity market. And I think in China, because they're a much, much more, uh, let's say, police state, uh, the, and they're, they're, the antiquity market is also controlled. But I think here the antiquity market is not, I don't think you can compare it to the Chinese antiquity market. At least I think it's a comfort fact to know that, um, you know, the galleries and that part of the ecosystem is at least in place in it's India. In Whereas place. in China, it's more mostly the auction houses who are largely responsible for the no, market. No, in China, there are a lot of collectors and there are a lot of galleries and there are a lot of non-Chinese galleries that have moved there to take advantage of the, of the, uh, the economy there. So the gallery system does work very well in China and that's why Art Shanghai and all the other fairs mm. are doing extremely well because there, are, there is this entire new generation of very, very wealthy Chinese who are able to support the art market. Mm -hmm. And in India, it's happening. I mean, you met this group of collectors who was here yesterday, and they are part of this entire group of people who have supported the art market in India. Otherwise, we would not have had an art market. Um, all three of us here are private galleries, and you're a corporate. So how, do, how, is, it, how is your relation to the global market? As a corporate, I mean, um, um, or is it the same? Or I, I, I don't, I don't see that it's, it's, it's very different at all. Is like, that you know? because you have deeper pockets? You know, it's like, is it? Do you think you could make a change, a difference, or you're moving ahead, or you have resources and funds that you know the others do not? I will. I believe that we all have the capacity to make a difference. It's like you know what you committed to. Uh, we we committed to being a 360 degree platform, and. Um, so if I just describe that, like, you know, so I, I call it a holistic initiative, starting with galleries to advisory services, education awareness program, a residency program, documentation, archives, and publication. So we wanted to, and I thought, like, you know, this was not, not just for the heck of it. We thought, like, you know, there was a lot of investigation, soul searching that went into it. And we said, like, you know, if you uh, kind of look at the sustainability of Indian art, then there have to be more and more players who kind of take that responsibility, come in in that capacity. And um, if, if the corporates, I hope more and more come into, uh, you know, arts in that capacity uh, to be able to address um, um, these issues, which like you know sometimes uh, become difficult, like when you are just like you know, um, um, just a gallery in, the, in that sense, like you know, entrepreneurial, yeah. like you know, just, just singular in that sense. Yeah. Um, so Sona, back to you. Um, so the so you are uh, feeling a very positive note in 2011. Uh, about India's art market in relation to the global? Yeah, definitely, because I think everybody is looking at India, lo hoping that it will be the next big thing that has happened. I have my reservations about that because the Middle East is turning out very, very much more exciting work if you look at the body of work that's coming out. But, uh, I mean, we have a very large support system for Indians in India and outside, and that's what's supporting our market. And even if the content value is, content, not value, but content is different from the Middle East, I think we definitely should be positive. Because even in the Middle East, like in our Dubai... I think there are problems, okay. okay, in the art market. And I think one of the problems is, uh, is that there isn't, uh, there's not a lot of visibility for, um, for everybody. And there's a lot of... Uh, Let's say there is a there is a layer that is completely uh, opaque, and which does color the art market. And this is the art part of the art market, which we can be happy. We we will be happy without. And I'm talking about all the negative things that are going on, like the fakes and things like that. If we can get rid of all that, then you know the support. The, then this whole thing gets much stronger. 